As we mentioned before, once my hand crosses my own center line, this sets me up for his punch. Now I can come back and taunt. What happens when I go on the inside with a pack, and I come to the outside or back to the inside with a taunt, I just keep adding his, or keep allowing him to continue his attack. I haven't nullified anything or shut anything down. Sure, I'm doing a certain amount of damage with each slap, but I haven't activated a counter hit or I haven't controlled the sectoring or the gates that are being opened every time I position him. So, that being the case, we try to work the pack to the outside line, then when he shoots in, I can apply the ton to the outside line and lock up or tie that motion. Just by adding pressure down into a swinging gate with the back fist hit, that allows this hand to be trapped. If I don't do the distinct line of pressure, I'm not going to get the tap or the, get the trap. So, as he fires the punch, I pack, I taunt, now I add the rear punch or the rear pressure. This signifies that. Allows me to pressure his uh, forearm and his bicep at the same time, and I'm maintaining adhesion to his fist. Let's have him lead with the right, uh, left hand, so the boxers, and I'll pack that. Then when I taunt, I come to here. As you can see, as this one shoots in, there again, I have the adhesion on both arms, and I'm in a good position to either go from the, from the trap into the lock or just into striking lines, then into the lock lines. So the pack sow, taunt sow, works in such a manner, come on in this way a little bit, works in such a manner as I can control the opening and closing of the gates just by putting pressure on him and more or less positioning him to enter in one particular sector. Off his right hand, if I pack out and put pressure high, this opens up a shot to the low line. The only way I can really deal with that is either let go of pressure here or integrate this other arm. When we come against the forearm, this would be considered a bong sal, okay? Remember we're talking about integrating the pack, pack ton with the bong ton and integrating those so that they flow together smoothly. If I take that right hand on the inside line and I don't act, answer his next punch with a ton, which activates that other hand, putting me back into here, I'm back into that position where I'm just shooting back and forth. So when I do the interior line, I pack out that. When he punches, I bomb out that. Now this allows me to do a swinging gate into the grasping line, monitor if I go to the foot trap, I pretty much limited his right hand. Okay? So as we work the pack tan, we also work the bong tan. Okay? Now the bong is just a forearm roll. If my hands are in my pockets and I've got and I've got my guard down. The bong becomes a very effective technique for, say, the sucker punch. Or just like, hey, the fight hasn't started, but the guy wants to clang me just off his injury. Okay, so he'll hit me with the left arm. I fade out of the way. This gives me a guard here, more or less kind of hiding behind. You'll notice my elf, my ch shoulder comes up, my chin hides behind, and I roll my head away. If my hands are in my pocket, I can still activate the bong motion. So this is taking the motion and rolling with it. As I come over to the top for my hit, in essence, I can apply my arm bar, fulcrum, fulcrum off my chest, and get my swinging gate technique in. So this movement here off the bong sow, in essence, becomes swinging gate. Catch my hand. And he parries it down. So the swinging gate drill allows sensitivity to the forearm and attachment at the same time a removal technique on impact, boom, I remove his technique and I fire mine. So when I enter with the bong or he attacks me and I respond with the bong, there's a lot of different options and possibilities coming into play. Say he hits me with the sucker punch and I respond with the bong, but I can't activate the swinging gate I'm still in bomb, and maybe this hand's in my pocket. Or I got my car keys or something's occupying me. So I want to do the one-arm clinging technique and go from the bomb to the ton. So let's activate that again. He punches, I deflect away, I see the gate coming. There's the ton, there's the shot to the eyes. Here's the plaque to reinforce
the support of the pressure, and not only that, but as you can see, to knock him off balance just by juicing him up a little bit. Let's try that one just another time. Hands are at my side, I'm relaxed. He sucker punches me. I go to the bong style, I position to the tongue, I add a pack, and I shoot the punch in. More or less, when this comes through, it's a swinging gate maneuver. Swinging gate maneuver. Okay? So, bong style, tongue style, pack style, punch. This puts me in position to go into the lock lines or control lines. But I, there again, as I reiterated earlier, we have to juice this guy up enough. So the bong saw has to come out with a certain amount of pressure. There's not enough pressure in the bong saw coming from my, from my forearm as he hits me to create, to create uh, an injury. So that being the case, I've just deflected that motion. I've got to go into here. I still haven't created injury on the attacking limb, but the pack saw, the foot trap, and the pressure with the hit allows for immobilization control, outbalancing, and a counterattack. That counterattack there will initiate enough positional control for us to allow a joint lock, a sweep, a takedown, or another uh, valuable attack. Let me explain that just a little bit more. As you deliver the pack out, think of a rock skipping on the water. When it hits the water, there's a certain amount of impact. That deflects, and then it continues on from there. We don't want to separate. Once we hit with the palm, we want to ride up into the forearm with it to maintain adhesion and be able to monitor his body position. If we can put a pressure on it and get a strike in there, all the better. If nothing else, we're able to feel where this guy is coming from. So a pax out is just that. Pax out is a slap, a glancing blow or a glancing block that will go into an attack line. There again, the pressures that you get, it's more of a committed direct forward, where the inward blocks that we were doing before travel side to side. The pack style skips and travels directly in, making the deflection and the hit almost simultaneous or actually almost working together, one and the same. That becomes the mindset. What's the difference between a block and an attack? Well, it depends on how you structure it. When you go to the tan style, you have the same option. Even though the palm is up, you can drive the forearm in and get a finger thrust or a hit from the fingertips or even a back fist by using the tonsil as a skipping block. But how we utilized it is something to hook and pressure with this forearm. Then once we created the hook, we can draw them in with downward pressure, sucking them in and giving us more of a collision course. Once we've drawn them down, sunk their weight, we spring off it. So we hit the pack, that disrupts them, they counter, we go to the ton or the palm up and utilize the hooking, draw pressure down, subtle sinking, boom, and we explode up into that. The bong style is a forearm ride block. It can come shooting straight in or it can just respond with the rolling. Proper positions of the bong style, ton style, pack style will depend on your position with your opponent, okay? So keep in mind, pack style is a slap, tons palm up, bong style is a forearm. And there's a variety of other ones where you pull, you, you twist, you turn, but I don't think those are quite essential. These three I find to be more or less very functional for the beginning practitioner. All right, let's put some of this together. We'll go from the entry lines, some of the primary ones I uh, showed earlier, and attach to them apply a certain amount of pressure, but the main emphasis we want to do is show once we've attached how this retraction works as far as outbalancing the individual. Eric, how are you doing? Cool. Let's work off that left hand lead. You'll notice my interior block. I've got that sector there open and I can respond to that with the exterior line drawing him down. Once I do this, if I allow the pressure here, my right hand is drawing and turning his elbow towards me, and it's natural to pull towards the hip. So if that being the case, and I have nothing but uh, my thumb here, I can take his eye and pull him in to the attack line. It's a little tough to see that on the camera angle, but we'll try to activate those movements, activate those lines, and let them come out and flow a little bit as we progress. 
Let's go off that left hand again. The interior line, if I attach it here, you can see the drawing.